coming up next on NMZ Live TV. That's what he said, but this is what God said. Up next on NMZ Live TV. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not his many benefits. Who forgiveth thine iniquities, who healeth thee from all of thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowned thee with loving kindness, who satisfied thy mouth with good things, so thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Good morning and welcome to another virtual broadcast. My name is Pastor Sharice Evans. I'm the pastor of the women's ministry here at the New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. Our senior pastor is Pastor Alfred Stewart. We are located on 590 Blue Hill Road, south of Calpin Road. You can also find us via our social media platforms such as Facebook. Please like and share our page. You can also find us on our YouTube channel where you can watch past as well as current broadcasts from the ministry. Please subscribe to our channel. If you wish to be a blessing to the ministry and partner with us as we fulfill the Great Commission, please contact us via our WhatsApp number where you will receive further instructions. Our number is 341 3726. That's 341 3726. Or you just may want to find out more information about the ministry. You can also contact the church at 341 1804. That's 341 1804. Our speaker this morning is our senior pastor, Pastor Alfred Stewart. He'll be speaking from the subject The Definition of a Fool. You know, in Psalm chapter 14, verse 1, we find these words. The fool had said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable work. There is none that doeth good. And this morning, I want you to listen carefully to the message as Pastor Stewart tells us the definition of a fool based on what he has done in the word of God. So after the praise team would have ministered, the next speaking voice will be that of our senior pastor, Pastor Alfred Stewart. Hear ye him as he declares the word of God. just yet if you don't see it come on and praise him praise him in faith that you have the victory stand against the Lord no one can no one will who can stand against the king no one can 
stand as we read a few verses from Luke chapter 12. We want to read from verse 13 to verse 21. Luke chapter 12, reading from verses verse 13 to 21, and shall we read together, please. And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed. And beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things which he possessed. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. 
And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no womb to where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my bands and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. And whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. You may be seated. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today for your living word. Truly your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Lord, to guide us in the paths of righteousness. Lord, we pray today that as your word goes forth, Lord, it would accomplish the purposes for which you send it. For oh Lord, we know it shall not return unto you void, but shall prosper in all the things that you have purposed. Anoint us afresh now, Lord, that we might hear. Give us understanding hearts that we might understand. And most of all, Father, help us to be doers of your word, and not just hearers only. These blessings we ask in the precious and the mighty name of Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen and amen. Today we want to speak to you from the subject of the definition of a fool. The definition of a fool. Now, why do we want to speak on the subject of the definition of a fool? Is it because we want you to become a fool? No. We want you to avoid being foolish and becoming a fool and to be wise. As we say the common phrase, a word to the, to the wise is sufficient. So, <clears throat> if you understand what the definition of a fool is, you know what to avoid in life. Amen? And so today we find a very familiar passage of Scripture, one that we've preached from and taught from many times before. And so, because we have spoken from this subject many times before, I don't want you to get relaxed and say, well, oh, I know what Pastor can say. Because you will miss what the Lord has for you today. Amen? Amen. He could preach from the same text, but many different messages in many different ways, many different truths. So touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor, neighbor, listen up. Don't become a fool. Jesus responds to a young man who was in the crowd as he was teaching as usual. And this young man, as far as he was concerned, he had a problem that he wanted Jesus to address. And he asked Jesus, he says, Jesus, can you do me a favor, please? I would like you to talk to my brother so that he would divide the inheritance with me. Now, what you need to understand is that 
in Jewish tradition and Jewish law, the oldest um, child had a double portion of his father's inheritance. So it appears here that there was just he and his brother, just two of them. So if the brother got a double portion of the inheritance, then it means that he got a third of his father's inheritance and his brother got two thirds. But he decided, Jesus, you know, after all, I mean, I'm his brother. Why should he have two thirds and I only have one third? Why don't you ask him to, to divide the inheritance with me so that we could have 50 50? Is the implication. Jesus asked him a very important question. Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? Jesus says, I didn't come to share inheritance and to divide inheritances. I came to seek and save the lost. How come you asking me to become a judge and a divider over you? Then Jesus turns to everybody else and issues a warning. He says, take heed, beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. In other words, Jesus was saying, please, don't make the mistake of this young man. This young man is covetous. He is desiring, desiring things that don't belong to him, that belongs to another. Turn to your neighbor and says, Lord, deliver us. From covetousness. How often are we not covetous in our attitudes? You know when you go to God in earnest prayer because you see your neighbor has changed their car. You go before God and says, God, I need a new car. That's not a need. That sounds to me more like greed. Jesus says, life is not about the abundance of the things that you possess. Life is not just about accumulating and acquiring more and more. Now, even though we live in the kind of society where, you know, we attribute success with things in life, Jesus says, don't, 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 don't get misled. That's not what life is all about. And to demonstrate this message, he tells a parable. And as you know, a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. In other words, there's some spiritual lessons in the teaching concerning natural things that Jesus told there was a deeper spiritual lesson that we are to take away from the parable. And here's the parable. The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. Now, notice. Jesus says this was a rich man. So he, he starts out from a position of wealth. It's a rich man. And in the process of time, as he 
plants and souls. His ground brings forth plentifully. In other words, he's got far more than he needs. And then he thought within himself saying, boy, I've got a problem. How am I going to solve this? What am I going to do? I have no room left to bestow or to secure all of this bountiful harvest that I've been blessed with. And then he said, oh, I know what I will do. I'm going to expand. Uh, maybe I'm going to take the house up one story. My neighbor is expanding over there and I need to prepare for the future, you know. And This place is getting too small for me. Yes, he says, I will pull down my bonds and build greater and there will I store my goods or bestow my goods in my expanded facilities. And then, he says, I will chill. I will say to my soul, soul, eat, drink, and enjoy this bountiful harvest. Yes. Eat. Drink. And be merry. How many of us aren't pursuing in life like this rich man? You know, we live in a society where we believe that, you know, hey, we need to start accumulating today for when we uh, get old and retire so that we could relax and travel and go on vacation and do all the things that we wanted to do when we were working, putting in all the overtime. So we need to Make sure we have a good nest egg so that we could enjoy life to the fullest. That's what the man said. And I remember now he's talking to himself. But then God answers him. But God said, Jesus said, that's what he said, but this is what God said. God said, thou fool. God says, you're a fool. Your purpose and mission in life is simply to accumulate and to acquire stuff for yourself. God says, you're a fool. Don't look at me funny. He said, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? Lord have mercy. I remember Deaconess Moxie was telling me yesterday that she had to go and pray at the funeral of a friend. A young man who had advanced in life, reached the highest echelons of the Royal Bahamas Police Force, decided he would retire at the age of 57. But before he could spend 
his retirement. He was dead. Now, don't mistake me. I'm not suggesting that this man was a fool. I'm simply using an example to show how uncertain life is. There are many people who work and get ready for retirement, but before they can receive their gratuity or their first pension payment, they're gone. We've been looking forward to retirement. When we could relax, just travel and do all the things we wanted to do. God says, you don't know the number of your days. You don't know the time that you have. So how could you build your life on an uncertain future? How could you base your actions and your life on an uncertain future. I think if you really think about it, that's pretty foolish. You don't know what's around the corner, but boy, you're making your plans. You got it all figured out. And yes, Jesus asked the question, all those things that you provided and saved up, who, 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 who are they going to be? They say they're going to be yours. You can't enjoy them. You can't take them with you. Separate apart from the fact that the box ain't big enough, even if the box was big enough, you still couldn't enjoy them. They will rot with you. But that's not the end of the message that Jesus sought to teach us in this parable. Here, verse 21, Jesus said, so is he that layeth up treasure for himself. Let me repeat that. He who lays up treasure for himself, Jesus say, is also a fool. Who lay up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. What do you mean I need to be rich toward God? God don't need nothing. Do you know what it means to be rich toward God? The Bible tells us very clearly in Proverbs 19, 17, let me hear, tell you what it says. It says, He that hath pity on the poor lendeth to the Lord. And that which he hath given will he pay him again. When you have pity on the poor and minister to the needs of the poor and the needy, the Bible says you are lending to the Lord, or let me rephrase it, you're being rich towards God. And trust me, just like the scripture says, whatever you lend to God, see, God ain't like, some of us. You know, some of us, oh Lord have mercy. 
When I hear, I want you to lend me, I say, oh, Jesus. I, I'm of you familiar with that, that tone. Can you lend me? And they say, lend me. I say, oh, Lord, last sight. You know, <laughs> tell you a secret. I like when some people say, can you lend me? Especially if it's a small amount. I say, no problem. I lend them because I know I ain't going to see it no more. Right? But as long as they owe me, they can't come back. That had pity on the poor, lendeth unto the Lord, and that which he has given, will he pay him again? Will God, God will pay you back? God don't owe people nothing. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, God don't owe you nothing. Huh? God don't owe people anything. Or let's put it this way. God don't owe you that he doesn't pay back. Over that way. Because if you lend to the poor or have pity on the poor, the Bible says you are lending to the Lord. In other words, you're being rich toward God or you're giving the Lord. When God pay you back, my brothers and sisters, it ain't like how some of us is payback, you know. Some will borrow a hundred dollars from you, and their conscience bothered them so much. They come back and pay you twenty. Um, this is on that thing I got for you. That's the last twenty you see. Now you all fix your mind. I'm not talking about Sister Jackie. Be cool. Yes, when God pays you back, my brothers and sisters, you don't, you don't have to worry. This is, is fundamental. This is very important because Jesus said to us that in the judgment that's the basis on which you're going to be judged. Have you been rich towards God? What do you mean, have I been rich toward God? Yes. When God was hungry, did you feed him? When he was naked, did you clothe him? When he was sick, did you minister unto him? When he was in prison, did you visit him? Oh, yes. Jesus said, For as much as you have done unto the least of these, my brethren, 
you've done it unto me. So your neighbor in need next door is an opportunity for you to be rich toward God. Just to check them out to see, is everything going okay? Is there anything I can help you with? We've got to learn to become rich toward God. We can't continue to walk in covetousness, thinking only about ourselves. Seeing everything that we want. I mean, wanting everything that we see. Just because we see it. We want it. No. That's not what life is about. Life is about giving. In direct response to the answer to Jesus' question of how to be rich toward God, Jesus later in that chapter tells the disciples and all those present, he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all things shall be added unto you. And he said, you do that by selling what you have and giving alms to the poor. And when you do so, he says, you shall have treasure in heaven. Let me explain to you the treasure in heaven is not storing up in heaven for when you get to heaven. Treasure in heaven is a heavenly account that God uses to bless you with in this life, in the here and now. To use you to be a greater channel of his blessings. For as you sow, as you minister to the needs of others, when God pays you back, he's going to multiply whatever it is that you gave. So, you don't have to worry about building your own storehouse. God's got the biggest account. He's got more capacity than you could dream of. You can't outgive God. You can't receive too much that God can't store it in your heavenly account. And so let's prepare ourselves. Let's change our attitudes. This is today, this is a day of repentance. Turn your neighbor and say, neighbor, we need to repent. Now, notice I said, we need to repent. All right? So I'm not pointing any finger at any individual. We all need to repent. Repent of our covetousness. We need a change of attitude. It's not just about us. We need to be, become rich toward God by ministering to the needs of others. Once again, we want to thank you for tuning into our broadcast. We know that you're going to receive a blessing. As you go throughout this week, I want to challenge you to start making deposits into your heavenly bank account. How do you make deposits into your heavenly bank account? By giving to the poor and needy. Once again, my name is Pastor Sharice Evans. 
May God continuously bless you. Have a wonderful day.